Hello my friends and welcome back to our continue blind let's play Homestuck for the PC. My name is the Fatless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel and today we're going to continue on with page 3974 but first as pointed out by a few of you guys thank you so much for pointing this out we need to go first to page 3936 because apparently I missed a panel here uh the one beneath the ship but yeah uh, we missed some panel here uh so let's go back and do this first and then we'll go back to the go back to the present i hope you're all having a wonderful fantastic day today i think this is the one that i accidentally skipped if not let me know in the comment section below i have no problem with going back to make sure we see everything that this uh that this story has to be told or the story has to tell you know what i mean anyway so we have a ship flying away mission accomplished says the little guy he thinks he has this but it was actually stolen from him right huh <laughs> he is going crazy <laughs> so dumb Friendly enemies are here. It is still missing though. Wait, this thing is gone too. <laughs> Actual mission dead. Oh man, that's a horrible picture there. Ish. <laughs> He's not happy. Oh. Brutal. My wallet? The ring. Huge relief. Notice. Oh, that's yeah, not good. Oh, uh, yeah. That's not good at all. He is not happy, that is for sure. Okay, he just blew up the ship. Well, that's not good. I hope we can uh, save our friends there somehow, some way. Okay, so now we're on the correct set of panels. And we can immediately probably go back to that scene. Because I think it continues maybe on this panel here. Yeah, it's it's going out of control towards the gate. Oh! Liv Tyler got away. What's all this? Ah! Boosh. That's cool. It's been a while since we've seen this little guy, hasn't it? Oh wait, that was the end of the that was the end? That was the end? I was expecting that to be the end. All right, so we have, I think we have four more to look at on this page. Let's just go left to right. That way I know which one's which. I did that one slightly out of order, but that's fine. Ooh, wait, there. Is this before he went crazy? Hmm. All right, so we have uh, TC and AT, uh, TC being uh, Gamzy, and AT being uh, Tavos. Right. It's kind of hard to read on this black font here. <laughs> uh, okay. Mm -hmm. One second, my friends. Just checking. Probably check the top page is why I should be checking. All looks the same still. If Mother F and Magic's all we've ever known at, it's easy to be missing what we be F and the Haps. And I'm all scoping the miracles that are in the dark. Got my AZ on miracles. They're here and they're there. I'll be checking the miracles while falling downstairs. And the 
us out of a miracle that all being up at basically pretty much everywhere. Ah! Oceans of Fago, effing glitter like space. Fists full of stardust would spot from my face. A million horns honking rockets and piles. One wheel device like a rocket in style. Is this stuff what I wish for? Because mother effing chorus, bro. I'm all a bearing believer of the miracles. You had time for miracles, brother? You got your notice of the miracles? So many miracles. The magic mother effing miracles. Honk. Oh, ha. Ha. Oh, yeah. The act was so strict. Aha, uh-huh, yeah, bro. My oath, definitely. Your rhymes. They are ruthlessly disciplinary. A- and my ear ducts have been naughty. I-, I think that they are naughty for more. Dude, you best understand I got more slams in me. They be forever as my limitless faith in all my believings and stuff. Ah, uh, well, what I need, my brother. Side the plowing nose uh, first into a band of tenacious mislidge. Is to check out what slams you can stick in my dicks. Y- yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. The eyes are mostly and enter- highly can be provided. Hey, can we drop straight into the orifice you mentioned? Ha ha! Drop it, bro. Drop it like you space down and forgot you were holding it in the first place. Hey, you brought up a pan, uh, and, and the last stanza, but at the one I'm a fan of, it is the pan handle pup, uh. Dang! Yes, dang, it is a legit thing to say about it, uh, about the pan with the main grit uh, on whom I now slam it. You slam it like a door by accident or something that hurts. Honk, 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 honk. You, you can't handle my slams. What else? A useless way you can. In, in which case, uh, that's cool. Uh uh. I, I just serve up the hoopla to uh, ghost noses. Those are hopeless. Uh, about the pan who's called pupa, and in the case you were guiltless, uh, about the pan who can man uh, up and, and is being able to stand uh, up uh, on the legs, unlike mine, which are, are functionally useless. God dang, you are dealing in some healthy reports tonight. Flying high, my man. Higher than a life as in up on the mother effing grief trapeze. Higher than a subjugator gaining his weep bomb for the vast honk of leaving to come. Ha, ha, ha. I, I wish. No, boy, I'm serious. Your rhymes are flies, the most wicked piece of other stuff, and the miracle ever took in the sky. Someone clipped their wings so I could see the chance. Whoops, I mean, see the chance. Ah, dang it. The only thing more flight than rhymes I- I'm saying to express on my mouse is it- its ability he had I wish was mine. Instead of, I guess, the excessive paralysis. Ah, look out for the hog, bro. Gotta get off those wheels. Get off those wheels. The miracles aren't sick. You'll get off of those wheels. But, uh, hi, in, in this case, it has double the meaning. It, it means he can't fly. Plus, does high self-esteeming. That That's two things he has that I, I, I'd rather were mine. It is two flappy wings and his hair big healthy spine oh oops that's three things i gotta get out those wheels gotta get out those wheels the miracles aren't fake you'll get out those wheels i uh, using my least useless foot to uh, kick it back over to you for and ah dang uh so slam it, it uh, uh, like the door in the face of a calling drone but let's pretend that's a real possibility and not invitation to an even more painful death just for the sake of that expression. Ah, dang it, man, that's awesome. Pure magic is all when the behatch of no grubs. I've seen this stuff with the, uh, shock your Luke's tubes. I peeped it on a place of six trillion hemos, all up in one rock bleeding as equals. It's easy to see if you search all your feelings. A place happens first to murder is the sequel. It's the beauty of the carnival, the magic's intense. The doctor's outside, but the light makes you wince. Just take my mother effing and in, bro. Put on the shades, pull back the flap, and get off of those wheels. Uh, okay, I, I did. Now, now I'm on the floor, motionless, in, in a terrible way. So, so oh, I got back on the wheels. It, it was a, a nice thought, though. Ha ha ha, yeah, yeah. Let's take this ninja tilted stuff back to the hive with the chorus. Together, my miracle brother. Yes, 
I'm all a firm believer at the miracles. D- uh, you had time for my uh, miracles, r- religious friend. Do you get your notice on all the miracles? So oh, many uh, uh, g- g- do is expletive miracles. The uh, magic mother uh, also expletive miracles. Heck yeah, here's where the same time soon now the mud honks. Honk, honk, honk. Honk, 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 honk. Honk, 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 honk. Uh, honk. Man! It, it's less appropriate for me to do the honks the end you, but uh, that was still great. Yeah, bro, yeah. The uh, slams were truly prime, and, and your uh, religious views, though, oh, I don't share them, uh, are reasonably inspirational. I, I think I'm in the process of releasing at least one tier. Me too, bro. Your mother after no will be some of my eyes boiled jelly to go with the emotional peanut butter. What? Well, uh, 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 uh. This is beautiful, dude. Feel so chill with you. Yeah, uh, friendliness with you is pr- pretty much always nice and-, and fun to have. Hey, hey, when we add up and start to kick out the red team noise, you should make a way to get your hang out of my half. Uh-oh, yes, t- totally. We could split a tin of the pimpest knees. I got all my hand baked up, all special for you, and then maybe make out a little. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> so. Uh-uh. 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 Okay, that was probably one of the weirdest panels ever. We got the crazy one who's killing everyone, making uh making moves on Davos. At least I think that's what happened. It was a little bit weird, but hey. <laughs> oh my gosh, what the heck is happening over here? And why are we stampeding on fogs? Past carcinogenesis, uh, 0314, there's that time again. Uh, hours ago, respond to memo. Oh God, he's still following you? You know, that is so messed up. We got Jade here. Yeah, it's okay though. As long as he's telling me like a lost puppy, at least he's not killing anybody. Don't trust him, Jade. I'm telling you, he has a stab happy planet exploding butthole. Remember what he did to Dave? It was like this whole episode. He had a hysterical episode about it, remember? I remember the episode. But he's but he's okay now. I'm kind of starting to think that was just his way of saying hi. My dog used to fetch my bullets too. I really don't think he believes he is my dog on some level. Just don't turn your back on him, Jade. Don't turn your back on the puppy. Don't worry. I'm keeping my eye on him. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Bad, Jack. Bad. Because he's topping on the fog. Nothing up here? Just got... <laughs> <laughs> Back to the paper kind. Oh, Betty Crocker facility. Wah, wah, wah. That is just so hilarious. This all powerful, omnipotent uh, creature is getting whapped on the head by a newspaper by Jade. <laughs> he really, he really does seem to hate frogs. Yeah, the poor foggies. My Jack had this irrational thing against frogs too. I mean, my normal Jack. You know, not this psychopath Omni uh, Pojack. Who is G A? Uh, Kanaya. Right. Just agents are heavily predisposed toward the murder and desecration of amphibious life forms in the iconography, respectively. Frequently, I had to thwart assassination attempts from the kingdom, or extermination attempts is probably better to say. You're probably right. They really seem to drive him crazy. This is not the first time I had to reprimand him. Wait, did he follow you into the palace too just now? Is that who you were yelling at? He was growling at Echidna and I had to tell him he was being very bad. He destroyed some of her really nice statues too. Keeping him in line really makes me miss Beck. He was such a good dog. Just not to mention a best friend. You know, Jack is just... The bad dog. The worst enemy. Exactly. I don't like this a bit. Makes me really nervous. You're just chilling with an unspeakable, powerful mass murder with the brain of a wild animal is about to hop sessions to try to kill all of us in a few hours. And what were you when... What were you even doing there again? 
You still haven't told me. Huh? You know, the palace. So pretty. Even with the homicidal dog over here. I recommend she return to her denizen for advice. About what? The location of the final frog required to complete the gene sequence. When his song should remove the last traces of dissonance the waveform. The creature is quite elusive, remember? Oh yeah, you were searching for weeks. Yes. And you never found it. I had a good lead, but you decided there was not enough time left to bother with it. Well, the reckoning had started. We had to kill the king. Understood, but this was a matter that really did require your attention. Well, yeah, I know, but maybe I was sick to death of milling around with frogs and their cacophonous stupid ribbits and mixing their slime and stiff. I mean, I'm not an ecto-scientist, no matter how many grubs who turn out to be us the game made me accidentally make. But you are the programmer, aren't you? That is at least kind of like being a scientist, having some technical savvy. I was a pretty horrible programmer. And anyway, only program viruses, like horrible viruses. I shouldn't have to be a slime technician or a frog farmer or a mystical croak decoder. I'm a warrior and a leader and a cold-blooded killer. We know. You are clearly very good at being all of those things. But now we need your help with our fog science. Can you help us? Whoa. Well, how long will this take? I don't mind helping, but I have major leadership duties to attend to here. Yes, I know. The team is falling apart in everything. But doing this was your duty too. And after a point of critical complication, there is only so much responsibility you could take for the actions of your team. Kanaya, what are you saying? What happens in the future? Are you giving me some assurance that things will work out? Because right now, I don't know where the heck anybody is. The future. Um, okay. I'm a vampire now. Apparently, if that helps. Who the heck is a vampire? Shh. 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 No future talk. Let's stay on topic. Oh my god. Why can't I get a straight answer to a thing? It's a simple question. Kanaya means she is a very pretty girl with pointy fangs who has a bright sunny complexion and wears fancy dresses. And maybe even sparkles. Although let's not try to remember that about vampires. Thanks. I cleared everything up. Just right up. Yeah, sure. And she uh drinks blood. Oh. You mean a rainbow drinker? Yeah, I already know that about her trashy novel fantasies. Are we done, uh, screwing around? They aren't trashy. Hee <laughs> hee. Well, yes. Hilarious. I guess I have no choice to believe you because skepticism in the situation were idiots, right? I mean, if I said, yeah, right, there's a drinker in this hive, I'll eat my cocoon. I'd be like the dumb loosest in the movie who doesn't believe the kid when he tells you there's a rainbow drinker in the closet. So I guess my reverse psychology should not be that dumb. Heh, yeah, Lord, dang it. And tell everyone to get in this scuttle buggy before it's too late. Well, fat chance I'm not falling for it. That sounds like a stupid move, movie. Well, how do you know what she looks like anyway? Did you see her in one of your afterlife bubbles? Yup. Why? When? Car cat, that information qualifies as future stuff. Just, uh, I don't know anymore. Stuff is getting away from me. The more time goes by without word from Gamzee, the more I worry. The more I feel like something terrible has happened, or will happen, I should go. No, wait, just please listen a little longer. Yes, staying would be better. Trust me that this was, and still is, a very important thing for you to have done and still do. Maybe even the most important thing. Fine. Well, let's just move it along. Did the kid actually tell you where to find this frog? Is that? Not exactly. She just helped me remember. Remember what? Something from my past. If I accepted her terms. 
What were her terms? You never did tell me. Well, yeah, because you never told me yours. Oh, I just thought it wasn't that important or interesting. Since Cock had thought that battle was more pressing than to wait for me to locate another fog. Also, what she asked me to do was impossible. So, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, she made me promise to do something that sounds impossible too. Except I actually agreed. I have no idea how I'm going to keep my side of the bargain now that I think about it. Excuse me. Remember, wait, wait, what? Oh, right. Where the last fog is. The thing is, the fog we need is nowhere to be found in the medium. It was on Earth. But only very briefly. It was when I was young. Before I woke up on Prospect, I had begun sleepwalking, both on the island and on the moon. And in my dream, it was very bright. I saw something in the light. I couldn't tell what it was, so I got closer. Well, what happened? But before I got there, I woke up and found myself by the lagoon surrounding the ruins. Aw, she woke up. If I can't. It's a cool little fog. I was about to walk home when I saw something appear on a lily pad. It was a fog. An amazing shiny fog not like any other I've seen in the lagoon. Aw, it's kind of cute. It hopped over to me and I picked it up. But then, just like that. Whoa! God, oh, it died. Huh. Later, my grandpa made a robot for me to help me with my sleepwalking. It could do all the walking while I stayed safe in bed. It could also record my dreams. I'm sure he always knew my dreams were going to be special. I suspect he knew it before I was even born. <clears throat> oh, great. So it's there on the monitor. Problem solved. You just appear, appear fire its ghost imprint. You mix it with your current evolution's paradox slime. Smooth out the genetic waveform. You tadpolify the bilious slick. And then you're done. <laughs> Hopefully. So you didn't remember seeing this frog when you were a kid at all? No, it completely slipped my mind. Well, how did she get to remember? I mean, what did she make you agree to? Well, like it was before, the choices she gives you seems to have to do with the facing mortality. And making it clear if you choose one path over another will lead you to your death. And that your death may even be necessary to accomplish a goal. Yes, I've inferred the ultimate or all personalized variations on the presentation of such dilemmas. Well, yeah, but that is not really what made this hard. I mean, nobody wants to die, of course, but at least that is a clear thing. You either do that, you either do you, you either do you, you don't, you know? I have no idea what you just said there. You either do you, you don't. Okay. Say that she, what she asked was impossible. It might be. What were her demands? She said that if I accepted her help, that I would have to make a promise that whenever we left this place and whenever we end up going, she had to come. Huh? Not just the kidna, but all the denizens, their palaces, their consorts, their lands, everything. I had to bring them all with us. Hmm. We gotta bring everything. Okay, uh, well, let's do him last. I know, we're sort of jumping out of order, but it's free-flowing. All right, so AA is Aradia. And TA, that is uh, Selix. Hey, what are you doing out here? Out where? Out of your bubble. Oh, I, I do know. A am I not supposed to leave? 
I just didn't think you could. I guess you must have a foot on either side. Can't say I'm surprised. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, what are you doing out here? Looks so cool. Radio looks so awesome. I am awaiting for my friends to arrive. They will need my help. What friends? More ghosts? No, they're alive. Fast, there will be two humans. They should be joining us any minute. First, then what? Then rest of our party. The survivors. Oh, so then we made it out here all right? Yes, well, they made it. Your body will arrive with them along with the others. Hey, maybe we can have a funeral. Uh, what's a funeral? Funeral? It's kind of like a corpse party. A big corpse party. The humans could probably explain it better than me. Oh, okay, cool. Oh. Ah, uh, it's so bright. How can you stay in here? You can see the sun. Yeah, I can see it, but it looks 2D. <laughs> Is this the green sun they're, they're approaching? Look at that. Ah, uh, look at that. Look at her smile. Just chilling there. Oh, that was it? Okay. Uh, that went by a lot like faster than I thought. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, shut up. <laughs> that was it? <laughs> Sometimes the pails are just so short, you wonder, wait, what happened to the rest of them? And then some are like really deep and sorry. I guess they do a good job of balancing that because instead of all of them being like super long, you know, some are long, some are short, and some are like medium. And that really helps break it up. Okay, I think I did all the panels, right? You can't do that one, you can't do that one, you can't do that. It's just five panels. Okay. Page 4002. Hey, we broke 4,000, my friends. Oh my God, there is. I think there's only one panel you can click on here. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, it says click the panels, but um, it looks like there's only one panel. You think you're so cool, bro. Happy makeouts now on the roof. Ha 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 ha. Honk. The heck? Oh, that's Car Cat. Oh! Took me a second to recognize him. And we're in Final Fantasy VI now. Uh, this is the, uh, I believe this is the town that Locke. Um, is in in his scenario where he has to steal goods, and this door leads to the guy that you gotta get the uh the liquid to, um the beverage. I think that's this one. Past carcinogenesis one three four, not three one four, but close. Hours ago, responded memo. Jade, you still in responding to this memo? I guess I don't have much energy left to argue about passwords. I didn't even get a password last time. I had to leave abruptly because Solix and Aridin, they started dueling again. And then Feferi and Kanaya. It all happened so fast. And now Gamzee is hunting us all down in murder mode. He's been taunting me through other people's message devices and leave me disturbing notes. I'm sure others must be dead by now. And now Solix is blind and I lost track of him somehow. I heard a stray honk and I ran and we got separated and I'm starting to think that this must be a doomed timeline. That's why I can't get in touch with anyone. It must be dropping like behemoth leavings out there. And that must be why future Kanaya was talking this memo. But now she's dead, which makes that impossible. It wasn't supposed to happen this way. Games isn't supposed to go crazy. I think if he does, it means we screwed something up. Well... It means I screwed something up. I mean, it's my responsibility. I had to make sure we're safe. And I didn't do that. 
One time, one of the doomed Aradias told me she came from a time where he flipped out and killed everybody because of my failure. I didn't take her seriously, but I should have. She was constantly fixing my screw-ups. Robots from the future was coming back to tell me how some hasty stuff I did with Fog beating whatever would make it impossible to win. My own personal mistakes probably counted for more doomed Aradia bots than anything else. Which was sort of a silver lining, I guess. I don't think we would have beaten the king without her army. Not that it matters anymore. I've obviously become just another guy in a doomed timeline watching everyone around him die. I was just sitting here wondering what I could have done wrong this time. To make the timeline take a wrong turn. And pinpointing it seemed overwhelming since I made more terrible decisions than I can even count. But, I think looking back, I know what it is now. Jade, are you still responding? Some, there's just so much shakiness and colorization. It was before we got trapped on this meteor. Before Jack showed up. Before we beat the king. And I wanted to let you know, Jade, that no matter what I did, or no matter what I said, I think the final fog must be important. And Kanaya, if you're reading this somewhere in the past, maybe. I'm sorry, you were right. I was always in such a hurry to win. I didn't take the time to do what was necessary. Billy is slick, needed the genes of the fog. And because I half butted this so bad, everyone is going to die. I always got the fog. See? I was thinking. About Jack, how he can't stand frogs. And I think I finally understand what's going on. I think I know what's about to happen at the end of our timelines. I think I know what the critical moment is. And it's completely my fault. Ectobiology is a touchy thing. Especially when you're building a genetic code for an entire universe. This looks like uh, a uh, a Zelda video game. We got Link approaching a, a dungeon. Our Genesis fog needed the genes from that final fog. But now, but because I was in too much of a hurry to do the job right... He's missing a critical sequence in his DNA. Still banging up there. What is this? There's some sort of outline here, but I can't see it. So when we made him and watched him grow in the middle of Skya, and after all the fireworks and fanfare from the vast croak had subsided, Whoa. Kind of felt like you didn't look so good. Whoa. So pretty. Like it was sick. I think I gave him cancer. It's a giant fog. I gave you a whole universe cancer, Jade. Thing is amazing. Whoa, it's like turning too. Like comes in and out of colors. So this is our universe and a fog. Sorry. Poor car cat. Alright, so let me know if I missed anything here, but I don't think I did. And by the way, if I do miss something and I miss a panel, please let me know what page it's on. Uh, that way I know because we have gone through a lot of pages. So, yes, I do appreciate that. Okay, nothing down here. Oh, there is something here. Okay, so it looks like there's four panels here. What's going on over here? Oh, it's the puppet. Yay. 
And he looks like he's not having a good day. Wait, is that his body over there? And is that his head over there? Oh my god! Dude! Uh, totally capricious began trolling. Turn tech godhead. It's all your fault. Huh? It's all your mother effing fault. Hawk! Ah, okay. You all cracked off the top of the bottle to this clown imposter. That all was bringing out the flagrant heresies at me. Flagrant mother heresies, mother effer. It's what came out of the mouths. Made me get my sadness on to see it. My rage on even harder! I I'm sorry. All my life I believed. And a paradise to come when held. The most baller, darkest of carnivals to join. And a prophecy! To tell all about a band of rowdy, capricious minstrels dipped in the good hair shrimp sea. The mirthful messiahs were foretold to be crashed in that pie stand here and bring the holy ruckus. Like a giddy ninja, one wheeling headlong at the highest horn. Keep shangri eyes got to see. Talking about the vast honk, you blasphemous mother effer. What I believed in to be was so beautiful, us and them all mellowing tents, bumping sounds, tossing back the vago and soaking the miracles up our face sponges. While a special stardust rained down at our elixir, sticky faces, like a bunch of the fairy powder from the religion space. It was going to be us and mother effing them. Them and us. Uh, well, uh, this is like uh, some trolls, trolling shtick, right? This ICP stiff. But now, because of all you, because all you and your outrageousness, you stole of all my miracles away by revealing at me how the wicked stuff was really kicked. Like some filthy science stiff when old times would be ruled unfunny without even getting his trial on. Now, don't know what to think about the spiritual fantasies I had. Honk! Ah! Well, that's the best troll ever. I don't even care if you're really into this stuff or not. It's awesome. Uh, what stuff? You know, like horrorcore. Lame clown rap and stuff. Uh. Dude, are you an actual juggalo or not? Bro, that word you use isn't anything real I've heard of. Strikes at me as another radical bastardization of some sacred stuff I take seriously in my pump biscuit. I mean, I guess, took seriously. <laughs> Do you really not know what I'm talking about? I have the idea that you put in my pan to sit there. That the paradise planet is a joke! And the miracles are fake! Pure fiction. False Vicky Farty Con Johnson, a bunch of unfunny ninja holoquin BS artists! Ha ha ha! I can't even tell if you're trying to troll me with this or if you actually are having some weird emotional problem. Can't it be, you know, both things? Okay, I'm telling you, you need to watch this video. The song isn't even supposed to be released for another year or something. But I got it from an inside source. This is as hot as it gets. Hang on, let me dig it up. Still banging. Okay, I just want to check. Delirious Biz Nasty. Pastor Chump. Got a link here. The Mother Effin' Miracles. Betty Crocker. Please enjoy Mr. Strider. No. Mother heck no, bro. I'm not looking on any more of your Basim memes. I really just came back on to Mother Say. Now, while that sickening noise you did at me is your fault, there's something I did at you that's mine! I did something that's atrocious to your posse. Made your crude jokers get to being kind of mentally mother F and unstable, it's a fact! That atrocious business I got to doing. I did the, sh did the heck to your whole universe as a matter of, you know, fact. You see, you see, I finally got caught up in all that that's true beyond the sweet murder mirth. Of, you know, the blood circus. I reached you down and got out where all the real harsh whimsy were hiding inside me. In the angry ways, I found out my dark ancestral chuckle voodoo's within. And then! It's going crazy if he's not crazy already. Seen John? Past John? I focused on them through the rage you made me have. And I went and made your universe! 
Wait, he's the one who made our universe? This crazy guy? Terminal. Boo. That is so very creepy. Well, none of that really meant anything, but okay. Also, you have me confused with somebody else who never talked. I guarantee I would have remembered you. All that matters is I remember you and what you did. Just all letting you know on the ways I set the high justice in motion. Me and us square, you and me, me and you. Well, that's cool, juggalo guy who I still can't quite tell is ironic about this or not, but like I said, either way, it's all good. <laughs> you don't believe. You need to get more spirituality in your superstitious ghost. Like the faith chump that what I was. So if I forget to do my chunk of voodoo's to you too. To mess up your dreams. Make your worst fears come alive and get up on the haunts in your not happy pan. Ah, what? What fears? You know, brother. It's the puppet. The one that's got all the be my best friend I got now. Now that my other buddy managed to be having his head chipped off. Oh, God! Did my bro put you up to this? I should have guessed he might have a hand in some of these, uh, you know, horrible trolling escapades. Bro's dead, bro. Couldn't keep my new friend captive no more. At least you not miss right into my embrace. Now I listen to what they whisper through my ear ducks. Ha ha ha, Jesus. You're like stupidly insane. I'm all hearing these amazing things. I think they'll keep me right figure out what's the real reality about the miracles. You'll help me to mother up and discover the truth of who the messiahs are. You know, the real messiahs, not the false myths and lies. <laughs> so, uh, my bro's idiotic ventriloquist dummy is responsible for the schizophrenic BS? Is that what you're saying? Heck yeah, bro. Ah, what else does he say? Well, he says, on oh, this funny little voice, that is so very, 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 very quiet that it's hard to go, mother of the Well, that sounds about right. Better do what he says, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Here I was to come up with you all these unruly embrace I got pinned up. And you know what? I should be getting grateful to you for staring at me at your way ridded caresses, brother. The dark, the road to the dark carnival has never before been paid without a haunt corns to be tread upon. Scare the living heck out of the little bud faithless with each step. Ha 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 ha. You are either literally an insane psychopathic murderer or some kind of trolling savant. It's time to block you now, but you know, let's do this again, okay? You know it, bro. I like you. I wouldn't mind taking that pale marshmallow you got as a mug bone off your shoulders. You know, for this collection I got started on. And a little strawberry jam to this peanut butter sandwich I make it between my lips. Holy heck. Hey, before you go, how about that we, you know, slam a little? Ah! They both then proceed to have one of the best rap offs in the history of Paradox Base. Oh, I wanted to see that. Oh, that would have been awesome. Ah, darn it. Oh. I don't know, some Latin dirge should be going on right now when I look at this fog. It's defective genes probably made it impossible for your session to be successful. Sort of like its reproductive system was damaged, but should be fertile ground for your new universe to grow was replaced by a massive bomb rigged to blow up your whole station. Probably just one of the many symptoms of a sick universe. It's not like you actually did anything wrong. You were actually fighting against a disease that was always inherent in your reality. You know, the one that I gave it. Whoa. But I don't think it's like a normal disease. Not like a cellular mutation that's out of control. Cancer that took a specific form like a complicated series of table events rather than faulty cell division, was an eventuality in the universe that was inevitable that we all unwittingly helped ha make happen. 
It all concentrated through the actions of one hostile agent in the system. With an instinct to destroy everything I hated. And then, given the power to do so. Whoa. And unlike a normal disease, and when it gradually killed its system within, the cancer left the body chased out as if it by an immune system. But the problem is, it wasn't any less deadly on the outside and no less determined to finish the job. God, the artwork in this game is so good. So I don't know what else it could be. What's waiting for us at the end of the countdown? Jack was expelled from your session somehow. He then methodically destroyed all our planets, Prosper and Durst, and tried to wipe us all out. So that we couldn't do the same thing to him again. But he was always saving his true target for last, the one he hated most. Jack was the living embodiment of the disease all along. The Noir is a cancer. Clock counting? That thing happened. That's something that happened. It's him. Well, anyway, that's uh, the end of how everything is my fault completely. And I'm garbage. Hope you enjoyed it, Jade. Now that you seem to recall this memory even exists. If you see Kanaya in Death Bubble Hell, please tell her I'm sorry I let you down. And if you see Solux wandering around too, let him know how ashamed I am I ditched him like a cow because I heard a honk. Horn go honk. And Terezi, if you see her, could you give her a message for me? Tell her that. You know, actually, never mind. I'll probably be able to tell them all in person soon. Seeing as an idiot makeup is about to roll over my naked sequel pipette with a one wheel device. Selix is okay. He's with me right now. Holy heck, you're alive! Hold on. I really need to change these clothes. Oh, I want to know more about that! Bang, bang, bang. What did I say? Bang, 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 bang. What's going on here? I have repeatedly made it clear that the fifth wall is to remain off. The fifth wall? Whoa, what the heck is going on here? I know what the fourth wall is. What the heck is a fifth wall? The heck? The heck? I refuse to acknowledge this foolish man's self-indulgent rubbish. His frivolous charades have no place in this building or anywhere in this reality. Am I making myself understood, young lady? Okay. Right, like I'm going to teach him about computers. Okay, so when I click that, that happens. All right, next panel. Well, I had to suspend your furniture privileges again. Oh. Bonk! Ooh, give him the double bird. I see. It's another one of your moods. We'll have to work on ironing out this behavior before you meet your true master. So she's got that symbol. And she's got green clothes on like he has green clothes. How is she here? He is far less gracious host than I. Wait, what are you doing? She just suddenly grew up. Because she took those things out of her head. No, stop that. You render yourself in a more symbolic manner this instant. <laughs> Thank you. I'll turn you in translation. Grief, a grass, a grub. Oh, is this what we're doing now? Magics! Maybe I have not been strict enough with your breathing privileges either. Oh, wow. He just Darth Vadered her. Whoa. This vessel will reach your planet eventually. You can either go home the fast way or the slow way. 
Your express trigger can only be validated with the display of good manners, miss. Youthful. <laughs> Actual undying threat. She wants to. Why would she want to do that? I mean, how did she get here? Like, where is she? Where did she come from? Boom! Thwack! Man! And there go the electricity privileges. Jeez. I think now would be a good time for another round of re education regarding. Her purpose, a little refresher on the prestigious employment opportunity for which she is being groomed. And since you are still my guest, I would please me to tell you this inspiring tale as well. On. It is a tale to remind her of the sacrifice she must make, one serving to remind all the people of the sacrifice once made by long forgotten heroes in a discarded reality. It is of this sacrifice that the sufferer died to speak the truth, and it is his tale I will tell you now. Oh. Got all the symbols. That looks so cool right there. So cool. That is to say, they had never known me. As it is true of the bellicose world we know, there came to be twelve heroes on this peaceful planet. These heroes too had twelve ancestors whose fortunes were entwined with theirs. These twenty-four figures of legend were not of this world but sent from the sky, delivered from a reality not yet conceived. On the eve of their race's extinction, the twelve heroes would begin playing a game. They would make an admirable effort, but they would fail. The civilization had not prepared them for the rigors of this game, and the ultimate reward would fall shy of their grasp. But their failure was more comprehensive, more systematic, than a result of simple inadequacy so common young players of this game. Though they could not recognize it for the bad omen it was, this session was not the one in which they had been spawned. Such is the symptom of a subtle glitch affecting certain sessions, an error designed to trigger an unfathomable cascade of misfortune throughout paradox space. This glitch is a calling card of the one I serve. It is the discreet, gentlemanly manner in which he reserves his place in the universe for later visitation. The heroes, understanding their defeat, were absolute. Sought advice from the mother of all monsters. She offered them a choice. The heroes could either accept their defeat along with the extinction of their race and put no others at risk, or she could show them a path to a second chance, the reality in which the chosen heroes of their race would be strong enough to succeed with ease and claim the reward. This reset would come at the cost of wiping the failed heroes from existence. They would live new lives from scratch, playing different roles in the reset reality, with no memory of the game they played or the choice they made. And he, it, the heroes chose to attempt this bargain, and scratched their session. In doing so, they jump-started the reality in which the 24 figures of legend would together be created, and I as well, and then sent back in time to take our places in history. Though I was delivered well before history even began, before the dawning of life on their planet, this time around I would oversee its development and thus fulfill the mother's promise of an aggressive, ruthlessly prepared group of heroes, one that would not rest until victory was secured. The young twenty-four would again be scattered in two groups, twelve modern contemporaries and twelve ancients. But in addition to losing the memories of everything that happened before the scratch, there was another catch for the failed heroes. In the new reality, they would not serve as the heroes. They would mature to become the ancestors of the twelve they formerly regarded as theirs, and this twelve would be chosen for glory. These children would be the heroes to achieve victory and have the reward easily within reach. Of course, this promise was fulfilled to the letter as you have seen. The entire bargain was executed without a single hitch, as those authorized by my master always are. Though there was, however, one minor anomaly. One of the failed heroes in his new life 
as an ancient on this now brutal planet. Began to remember, this is his story. This is the story of the signless. Looks like car cat symbol. Few ever knew this sick sufferer's given name, presuming quite recently he had none, and he became it. And he came to be called signless. Unlike his peers distributed elsewhere in history, he was not given a sign at a young age. Alas, there were no signs reserved for one of his mutant blood. His genetic deviation from the social order made him a pariah, forcing him to wander the world alone for many sweeps, concealing the color of his blood to avoid certain execution. But it may also have been due to his mutation that he began to have his visions. Spontaneous, lucrative imagery of this world in peace. Before its fall, he would never see the complete picture or fully understand his previous incarnation's role in prompting this fall, or know of my hand in it. But the vision showed him all needed to see. They held the promise of his people's true potential beneath the ages of conditioned cruelty. They held the spark of revolution. In time, the visions gave purpose to his travels. He would reach heretical ideas no one else had dared to entertain, let alone risk discussing. He espoused the virtues of forgiveness, compassion, and equality among all bloodlines. He distributed his message intelligently, careful to preach only to those receptive, never attracting unwelcome attention. But his growing movement could go unnoticed by the authorities for only so long. The high bloods were livid over the unprecedented heresy, and soon a massive sectarian war followed, spreading across the planet and across throughout the galaxy. The conflict was lopsided, of course, with the high bloods given full support from the Kandes and her sea dwellers. Inevitably, the signless would be captured, and then, when he was, it was not a matter of whether he would be put to the irons, but how hot they would be if he failed to recant. Oh, it's got the, uh, the, the, the sign on it, too. Oh. During his penance, it was said the sufferer's compassion for his people underwent a divine transformation into limitless burning rage. It burned hotter than the iron shackling him to the imperial flogging jut, the redder and redder than the blood soaking his righteous leggings. When he was finally killed, his anger rung throughout the cosmos with his last breath. The vast expletive was his final sermon, and somewhere encoded in its wavelength was the truth in his teachings, waiting to reveal itself to any who would inherit his burden. Hold on. I think I've been missing something. I've been missing the top. Sorry, everyone. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so it seems like right there things start happening. So, someone comes over. And then, I assume this is AH, right? There's a bed here. Then he breaks through. So he just broke booyah. <laughs> it actually says booyah. Um, so it looks like he broke through uh, the gate into our world. His teachings would also persist through surviving disciples, but in hushed tones. His falling would dwindle into an obscure cult facing persecution for centuries. After his execution, the body was burned, leaving only his irons. They cooled in the ash as if his anger itself was subsiding, and his followers appreciate their shapes in defiance of the high bloods. The symbols became the sin of the signless, always shown as colorless as a cold iron, to conceal the stigma of his hue. This was much a reminder to his followers to remain hidden as it was of the sufferer's sacrifice, and his rage hidden like heat in the iron, one day to be ignited by another of his bloodline. 
The sufferer preached that after he passed, another sign list would come, heralding the end times for the planet. The second sign list would continue his work and lead his people to glory beyond this realm. The followers kept his teachings alive for ages, even as the uproar surrounding the movement subsided. By modern times, the sufferer's scripture was little more than ancient superstition all but forgotten, hardly the anathema of old. But the followers had already made the preparations in the shadows, and when the second signless finally came, it would have a lucis to rise him and assign to his name. The top banners start having alternate messages. Hover your mouse over the banner to read them. His message will be there on May next few pages. I read the um the booyah. But I don't see anything else. The heck? Holy mouse of the banner like this. Oh, so just go over. Got it. Oh, look at this. So beautiful, the artwork. It's just so amazing. The sufferer required a less conventional upbringing to reach maturity. As a young grub, he landed in the brooding caverns where he would be expected to face his trials. But due to his rotation, surely no Lucis would select him. No creature sympathetic to his scent had been bred yet. His odds for survival would have been remote if not for a chance encounter. The, Delo the Do Dolorosa belonged to the rare class assigned strictly to serving the mother grub in the caverns, forbidden from revisiting the surface. While on an errand, she found the young sufferer in his crater and immediately recognized the child as special, as well as in great danger. For an adult troll to raise a child was unthinkable, but she saw no other hope for him. The Dolorosa abandoned her duties in the caverns and fled to the surface to raise him. In time, she would become the first follower of his teachings and the first of his inner circle, but not his closest. Oh, who the heck are all of these people? Surrounding him on his rise to infamy and throughout the rebellion were the most trusted elites among his devoted. The Sweonic? Sigmionic? I don't really know what that symbol means. I could possibly look it up, but it might be a spoiler, so I'm not going to. Uh, was a mage of unequal telekinetic ability who upon hearing the words of the sufferer was inspired to free himself from the sort of slavery typical of his mentally gifted class. But his most devoted of all was his disciple. She listened to every version he retold, every lesson he preached, and faithfully recorded his scripture. Her ear was open to him always, and in time, his heart opened to her. To spread his message throughout the world, they took to the seas in the vessel of legend known as the first ship. It was said the love went beyond the four quadrants, transcending the grid entirely, whatever that nonsense actually means. Oh, heck no, he's talking about ancestors, isn't he? He's keeping little girls locked up in weird rooms and rambling about troll ancestors, I just know it. The disciple was to be killed along with him, but at the last moment, the executor inexplicably took pity on her, and allowed her to escape. She absconded with the leggings, which remained the only physical evidence of his holy suffering. She hid in caves for many sweeps, transcribing all of his scripture from memory on the walls and the blood of slain creatures, and lived the rest of her days in monastic savagery. Her dedication would be critical to the persistence of his message. But the Dolorosa was less fortunate and was sold into slavery. She spent the rest of her life as a property of vicious sea dwellers. As for the Weonic, who was enlisted in a far worse, if more prestigious service. I'm just going to say Weonic. I know that's not correct because that's a Greek symbol. Sorry. Authors blowed! Not in my comic! He was forced to serve as a helmsman for her condensation, condensation's imperial battleship. Physics of his kind were exploited for interstellar travel, and his abilities made her ship the fastest in the fleet by far. She grew so enamored of her helms helmsman and his power, she would use her touch to extend his lifespan to match her own. 
Oh, dang, this place is bigger than I thought. Any idea which way it went? Come on, guys, help me out. Um, Together, they explored the stars for thousands of years. Due to the speed of their ship, they would, she would personally expand the boundaries of her empire, typically being the first to greet new races before conquering them. Alternative translation, battleship condes condescension. I mean, he's behind this door. You hear me scratch? The jig is up. After making first contact, occasions which she generally kept cordial, she would move on to new territory while a division of her fleet set a course for the unfortunate civilization and proceed to tear it apart. It could be any of the lethal brigades under her command to receive the orders, be it the Thresh Executioners, the Cavalry Reapers, the law, the Lothsons, or the Ruffin Annihilators. Each was notoriously cruel in its own way, and each carried out orders with absolute loyalty. Because while the cadets could contain, extend a single life on a whim, she would just as casually cut short that of millions. Aha! Caught you the hand at you, rat bastard. Stop clogging up my story with all your troll fan fiction. This ends the... Can artwork is so good. If angered, she could simply express her grievance through communion with her ancient Lucis of the Deep and turn its psychic devastation on her multitudes. The class hierarchy played into her hands politically in this respect. Killing off a haphazard swath of the population or an entire class was suitable as a measure of last resort. But mass extermination does not lend itself well to practical governance. Its looming threat, however, is quite effective, especially while her empire was petitioned neatly into blood casts. She could use her leverage to delegate oppression to the subjugulators, whose unique abilities and exceptional brutality made them natural enforcers. They too would delegate in their governance, exploiting the pride and loyalty of dangerous blood havens, blood blue bloods beneath them, and so down the humo spectrum until the enslavement of the common caste was inescapable, in spite of their genetic gifts and strength in numbers. As a self-governing body, the land-dwelling portion of her empire was formidable, but a force of sea dwellers was equally formidable, and the two were kept in check not only with the threat of psychic annihilation but the mutual hatred and distrust. The only threat to her power was unification through uprising, a possibility made remote once she fully decentralized the race from the homeworld. She scattered all but the children throughout the galaxy after the most recent rebellion led by the summoner. Upon doing so, she became so comfortable with her grip on power, she risked venturing deeper into this space than ever before to grow her empire. But the more space she put herself between herself and Gurub Gurub, the more she risked weakening her bond with the monster. The bond she and her successor share with it exclusively could sway, and became strengthened with the younger. Perhaps she'd grow complacent with the threat the successors posed, after such a long history of killing them with ease. Heiresses, upon reaching maturity, were expected to challenge the Condes for the throne. It was not merely expected of them by the people, but demanded by their shared Lucis. I like to think of her as a pet I gave to the race, at the dawning of their species' evolution. Just like a sentence, a sentence warming gift. Again, it's just the sort of thing that a good host does. If the lapse in her custodial bond was significant enough, it was not just political power she risked. At such a distance, she sacrificed its concentration need to curb its most dreadful psychic shriek of all, the galaxy-wide extinction event called the Vast Glub. Of course, this eventuality proved a fitting reward for such reckless expansion of her territory. She chose the worst time possible to explore further from the homeworld than she'd ever been. She was scouring the edge of the galaxy for systems to plunder when she received word of her planet's devastation by meteors. The young were being slaughtered. The mother grub was dead. The end times were upon her people. She ordered all fleets to return to Alternia, but such was her empire's expansion and interplanetary occupation. Few could make it in time to provide any meaningful defense. She instructed her helmsman to pilot the ship faster than he ever had, and he did so through extreme physical duress. He was able to leap across thousands of light years in a matter of hours. The exertion likely would have killed him if the glove didn't get to him first. Her touch could extend life, but never restore it to her lament. In that instant, her empire was gone. Glibberglub, song song, wiped out her entire race, save the condets and her lonely heiress, 
leaving the Empire nothing more than a galactic necropolis of floating tombs. That was not the right door. This looks like the right place. The hallway is all around and stuff, just like his big stupid head. She was forced to continue the journey home on auxiliary power. Her ship now travels near the speed of light, a pale shadow of its former velocity. It would take her another 612 solar sweeps after the glove to reach her destination. She should arrive any minute now, and when she does, she will find nothing but ruins and dust. If she cared to look closer, she would find a city of slain exiles, a man on the moon, and a pair of black lovers locked in a deadly dance. But whether she looks it or not, one thing will find her with certainty, a new employment opportunity. My beautiful panels, what has he done? The son of a gun, it's going to take so many sweeps to clean this mess up. So, so very, very many sweeps. Are you paying attention, protege? This is where your role in the story begins. Now stop your putting and listen, unless you want another helping to the backside on my... Oh, nuts. I seem to have forgotten my discipline broom. Anyway, the last of the twelve ancestors arrived a bit late. In fact, she would cross through a portal six centuries after the descendants had come and gone. There weren't many left to look after her, so she ended up in foster care. I remember like it was yesterday. And for one who has as much hands on... Much time on hands as I essentially was. Gosh darn it, he's got a bowl full of these things? He's pulling his snooty horse butt candy bowl stunts to mock my little arrows now. Excellent host of my behind. Hey, there's that broom. Wazzah! Flip the table. Arrgh! Oh, where did that come from? Aww. Oh, she's adorable. Absolutely adorable. I would raise the girl to be groomed for her calling. My lessons would emphasize obedience, mastery of the clockwork magics, and being locked in a room. <laughs> that's that's what you master. As you must as you must have gathered by now, my employer will enter this universe quite soon. I will then relinquish my custody to him, and she will serve as his handmaid for an eternity be specified. As you must have also gathered, she has already done so. The most common of blood should have let her expire in just a dozen or two sweets. His curse kept her very much alive, and she did not intend to stay that way. Oh. Nom 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 nom. Oh my god, how can these possibly be so delicious? His curse is one of conditional mortality, with the desired outcome contingent on his service. When I release her, she will take her place at his side and travel through time to carry out his orders. While I am his weapon of subtlety and precision, the handmaid is strictly an apparatus of terror and suffering. We have both paid the road to his arrival. I in my way and she in hers. She will be present during every watershed moment in their civilization's development. Her recurrence in history would earn her the reputation of a demoness, more fewer than even her master. A man, though dreadful, rarely makes himself seen. She stirred up class warfare and intensified bigotry in whatever era she haunted. She made sure the descendants would enter a world which prepared them well for the game, and took measures to see that they would play as they did. But once they entered and the world was in ashes, her work was nearly complete. Now, six centuries later, she began with one last order to follow before a curse was lifted. A simple recruitment job. Stuff, stuff, stuff. The handmaid will enlist the condets, extending the same bargain once offered to her. It will be the sort involving neither negotiation nor possibility of refusal, expressed in terms plainly understood by the psychotic genocidal. The condets will serve as a new master's witch, carrying out his work in the places he cannot reach. The two last trolls alive. Oh, wait. There you are. Go ahead. Keep talking, q -ball. I got you in the crosshairs of my broom bristles. I have got you, you pompous mother effer. Sneak, sneak, sneak. The two last trolls alive, blood of rust and royalty, will make each other pay for the crimes against the race. The payment will be mutually dealt in the currency of punishment and reward at once. 
The cadets will be rewarded with the power and immortality her new service entails and punished by the grueling slavery for which it is synonymous. And you, young lady, are to be punished by death at the hands of your replacement. And so, too, will this be your reward. Blah. F you. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tock. My heartbeat falls in rhythm with the clock as I draw close to my prey. I leave nothing to chance, for you see it is the most dangerous prey of all. A four foot tall buttholes and suspenders who won't shut up. Wait for it, hussy. Wait for it. And so, my dear, that is the inspiring tale of your people, and why you should feel rather privileged to be in the position for which I have groomed you meticulously. Are you not grateful? Yes, surely you are. And it warms the soft, fluffy material on my chest to know this. What is it? What are you looking at over there? Ah, uh, of course, the clock. I can see you have a good eye for a fine timepiece. Your exemplary taste is certainly owed to a quality upbringing. Perhaps you wish to know the history of the clock and how I come to possess it. Yes, I can see the sparkle of curiosity in your eye. It's a marvelous tale. One almost as long as is reversely told. Uh, where do I even begin? Ah! Trip. Dong. All the dots. Story time's over. Windbag. Whoops. Aw, oh, dang. Get this stupid clock out of my way. I'm a one-man stampede, and I got a broom in that peel of splintering wood here is the last gasp of a priceless antique disintegrating beneath the outrageous fear of my authoritative hooves. Bad to put up with one more smug meandering interlude in my own story, I'm going to crack your head open, serve you a heaping bowl full of downy soft puppet butt. How do you like that for hospitality, Doc? I believe you'll find that as those go, I'm simply the best there ever is. Everybody is totally fed up with your condescending, self-indulgent narrative style. They all want to go back to my slightly less condescending, slightly more <laughs> self-indulgent style. She's running. See? You're that little girl you had enough of your stuff. Run! Aradius ancestor, run! You have locked up your last Asian schoolgirl, you sick freak! And don't you flop around all on me like that. You listen, you little man. Girl. That's kind of cool. Oh, and that's changed too. Spike. Suckers! Booyah! Hmm? You there, girl. I guess, I guess he's just a limp, lifeless puppet when I'm around. Like a reverse Calvin Hobbes kind of thing. That's, that's a little disturbing. Girl, quit all this scurrying around. Oh, well, might as well try to get that disc back. I wonder if I can just, just you know, sort of reach up into it. Uh... Can't read it um, because of the green. Uh, do you believe you can escape me before I arrive? Is that, is that his master? Reach. How do you expect to outrun me? What the heck? Looks like he had it disrepaired for a while already, but he didn't tell us. Stupid idiot just loves the sound of his own voice. When I'm already here. Oh my god, that is freaky as heck. Snop. Ollie's out. Snop. Oh. Dude, what in that comic? No, 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 no. Unsnoop. Unsnoop. Yes, unsnop. There we go. You got past the part where you had to pay attention to the top banner. You did pay attention, right? If not, go back to the start of the section. Look at the banner this time. Insert disc two. Attempt rare and highly dangerous five times showdown combo. All right. Well, I think we're going to stop here, my dear friends. Uh, we've been going for a while. I, I don't want to stop in the middle of all that, uh, all that, uh, self-righteous monologuing as, 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 um, AH said. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and stop here.
Okay, now that I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight after watching that horror show. Um, honk, shh. Hmm. Maybe it's not so much of a horror show after all. We will pick up here in the next video. Thank you all so much, my friends. I love you all so very much. Hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And, uh, yeah, until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.